for the mouth. Remember this is the split in the lips. You start just a little peak there, swoops up from that straight line. Doesn't veer from that line too far. And again, I'm going to do a fast forward so you can watch draw the nose. The eyes, we already discussed, are one of these measurements wide, and they're about half an eye width tall. So I'm taking that center mark, and I'm making a little mark up here and a little mark here at the half widths. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this one, centering that half mark, one here, one here. This is going to be the height of the iris. Some of the iris is going to get cut off by that top lid, so that is going to be the full circle size. Very important to get the circle really, really round. The reason we draw the circle and then close it with the lid is if you draw the lid covering the circle, like you just go straight for this, people will actually oftentimes draw the iris more squarish uh, and not get it round. So this helps you to see where round is. And then the pupil in the middle, centered, really important that it's got the sp same space around. and. I don't know, to me it looks like a donut with a hole in it. Those proportions, you don't want this to be too skinny, you don't want this to be too small, etc. And then you want to do the same thing over on the other side. So now we're coming from that line, bringing the lid up so it cuts off some of the top of the iris. It can come slightly to the outside of this line you marked. Now on the inside, there is a tear duct. So you make a little loop in there, not big, little tiny thing. And then the bottom eyelid often will graze the bottom of the iris. Make sure there's a nice curve here and a nice curve here. You don't want it square at all. Then we have some other lines. When you go to do the other eye, it's very important that they match. So as you draw your circle for the iris and the second eye, you want to measure your first one, the width of that circle. This one's a tiny bit too small, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. It will be very noticeable if they're different sizes. Remember that this eye is backwards of that one, so your tear duct is going to go this way. That's that little curve right there. Grazing the bottom of the iris. Next measurement I'm showing is for the height of the eyebrow and then the top of the head. From the center of the eye, one full measurement up to a line across. From that, Let's see, I think I'll turn it this way. From that line, I'm going to put the half on there. So you're going a half and one and two. So a half, one, two. This is going to be the top of the forehead. 
So I don't want it to be flat up there. I want it to be slightly curved, but it's not curved very much. Then I'm going to take the side of the head and I'm going to bring it up. Just make those curves kind of meet. It does help if you turn your paper sideways. About like that. So if you take your finger and you run it along this ridge of your nose, like where you can feel your tear duct and there's not a whole lot of room to the side of the nose, so about that wide, then that little edge right here, that cartilage inside your nose, you can feel it running into your eyebrow. You can actually feel that space right there. When you go to do the other side, I would turn your paper upside down. It'll be a lot easier. And then when I do eyebrows, I like to just kind of almost scribble, but in the right direction. I find that actually looks better than shading. Now we need to find the proportions of the bottom of the face. So we had already measured to this little curve on the top of the chin. We have one full eye measurement to the bottom. So the chin is going to curve a little bit tighter than the forehead did. Tighter curve right here. Out. This side of the face is coming down, and then you have a little bit of a cheek there and next to the mouth. Little cheek. And just kind of adjust so you get the look you like. About like that. Now we're going to go ahead and add a neck and shoulder to this. So Right out here, which is pretty much under the outside edge of the eye. I'm going to curve this line in. Find that line here. Curve it in. And then your shoulder actually attaches at a curve as well. We need the ears and some hair. So the ear comes all the way up to the top of your eyebrow, and believe it or not, goes all the way down to the bottom of your nose. It's gonna feel like you're drawing it too big at first, but as long as you don't make the ears stick way out, it'll look fine. Now I'm not gonna start at that line up there. I'm gonna start down a little bit below it, curve it out. Now I'm gonna jump down here to the nose line and this one is the same shape as that, but look that it's about half the width of that. And then I connect the two. So this comes down and kind of swoops in, and then this comes up and connects. And then you do the lines in it. That represents the shapes. And just like the eyes, it's difficult, but you need to try to get the other one to match. Hairline. If it's a young person, if they had short hair, so no bangs, short hair or hair pulled back, the hairline is going to be about here. Come in, and then you have a little bit of hair that comes in front of the ear. It's not even sideburns, it's just a little bit that kind of grows in here. doesn't matter male or female you're gonna have a little bit of hair in front of the ears and then you have to give it some volume even short hair 
is going to come out a little bit bigger than your skull because it grows from the skull. And in another lesson, I will be showing you how to do different textures of the hair.